Like the thing, this is a very simple thing, but like the thing that you create is not you. Trying to separate you from the thing that you make uh, is a very important early step. And when people aren't liking it, they aren't, it's the thing that you made that they're not necessarily connecting with. It's not you. Welcome to your new episode of Wish I Knew That Before. I'm your host Amit Pandey and here we bring on guests from different walks of life to discuss ideas, answer questions that can directly help a young adult navigate the journey of life a bit better. Our guest for today's show is a filmmaker, writer, speaker. His fans love him for his ability to break down complex cultural, political, scientific, historical and tech subjects into simple ideas. He's best known for creating a popular online video series, Everything is a Remix, where he took us on a journey to show the derivative nature of creativity and how we can stand on the shoulder of giants, copy, transform and combine their work with ours and make unprecedented progress. The series has been viewed more than 1.5 million times across the globe. One of the notable things about him is his ability to stay with massive ideas for long. In the world of fast art, he takes his time to research and find solid facts and captivate his viewers with brilliant storytelling and editing. When it comes to art, he's a true believer in following your bliss, being a fan of your own work, but also being a merciless critique. He is a humble artist, even though his work has been highly praised by the likes of Mythbusters Adam Savage, Lost co-creator Damon Lindelhoff, critically acclaimed author Clay Shirky. Even though he has captivated thousands of audiences from big stages like TED, Netflix, Google and many more, you would still find him openly acknowledging his mistakes and the things that he can improve on. So please join me in welcoming the artist who wants you to copy, transform and combine ideas. Just don't steal it. The creator who relieved millions of viewers from the pressure of being original. The storyteller, the researcher, the bartender of ideas, Kirby Ferguson. Yay! Yay. <laughs> nice intro. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for having me. Welcome, Kirby. And yeah, I mean, thank you for saying yes. I mean... As we were talking before the before I hit recording that I was thinking about this idea from quite some time that what is originality because I was feeling the pressure. What is creativity? Mm-hmm. Being an engineer, I was never sort of maybe because I'm doing engineering, there is creativity involved in it, but I never viewed it like that. Yeah. During my engineering days, we were never told that, okay, engineers are creative. No, engineers are logical, right? Yes. So I started my journey um, into some form of content creation and being an artist in somewhere around 2019 when I started to post things on Instagram. I'm still developing my my idea of being an artist and content creator. And we will talk a lot about everything is remix, originality, creativity, um, art and money and all of those points. I want to go there and touch it. But firstly, something that came up for me, which I didn't find a lot um, when I was researching you is, what does being an artist means to you? Being an artist to me means not simply serving the marketplace. It Mm -hmm. means not just doing what will get you views, what will get you likes. Uh, I think an artist to me has to have like sort of a forge your own path mentality, not entirely. Like you also need to overlap what you're doing with what people are interested in. You need to, I I think you, you, you do need to serve an audience, but if you're just kind of pursuing views or money or whatever, um, I think you're not an artist. I think you're more of maybe a craftsperson or, or an entertainer or whatever. And those things are good. Like, I don't think people should feel bad about doing those things. If that's your inclination to just make money, I just want to make money and provide for my family and all that. That's a, okay. You can do that. Yeah. But I would say an artist is more independent minded and is pursuing things for their own purposes, for their own purposes of learning new things and experiencing new things and sharing 
new ideas that are challenging a bit. I think artists challenge you a bit, whereas I think like mm -hmm. an entertainer is looking to just give you what you want. You know, they're looking to serve your needs and it, they're, they're not, one's not better than the other. They're just different. But I, to me, I think that's the core of being an artist. An, an artist is, has some measure of a lack of concern about popularity or money or, or whatever. It's not what's driving the, driving the ship. Yeah, yeah. I love that. That's I, I never thought about that. Like there is Great. Yeah, I mean, um I always thought entertainers are artists and sort of they are. But they I think are. this And this, you can be both. You can be you both. Can, you can yeah. be both and um yeah. We need that, right? Because like, um, I all, I read this somewhere that um, when you're hungry, you cannot really create art because you need food on the table for also your mind to work and things to take in care of. But the driving factor is not money. It is about challenging yourself, being that independent thinker. It's not about likes and comments and shares. Mm -hmm. We need that. Yes. We need that to grow and yes. bring in more opportunities. And yeah, um, yeah I, I love that. And Something, right. something, something that came up during my research is you were in graphic designing when you were mm -hmm. young and then yes. video editing and using video as a media for expressing your art came a bit later, like uh, yep. close to end, your end 20s, late 20s. Yep, that's right. That's exactly right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that that's the thing, right? Like today, this young adult, the Gen Zs, the millennials that are coming up, they are pretty much the digital natives and they yep. are sort of they have started their content creation journey in a place where a lot is driven by likes and shares and comments right um would you say because you were from a older generation you got some time to actually define who you are as an artist rather mm -hmm. than just being driven by so many things like you know like external validation like how did yeah. this definition which is like so cool that you came up with how did that came into picture i think yeah i think you're you're on the right track basically like i didn't have when i was a kid there was no social media there was no when i was a teenager it was, old, it was still the old media world, right? Like it was movies and albums and television and stuff, right? It was, um, and and I think the, the stuff that I connected most with was the, like, in, was like independent film and like indie music and things where they were just trying to be the best that they could, that they could. And they weren't selling the most albums or they weren't the most popular TV shows. You know, that was the most, that was the stuff that I connected with. So I don't know what it's like being like a teenager or a 20 something now. And like, is that still a drive? I don't know. Like, like to just be, to, to me, the drive was more like, I want to be the best. I want to do the best mm. stuff. Like, cause the popular stuff is not the best stuff. The, the best stuff is not broad. It's, it's not broadly popular, right? Like people aren't watching the, people aren't listening to the really good albums. You know, they're listening to the, to the music that like everybody kind of likes, yeah. you know, which isn't the best stuff. So I grew up with that sort of indie mentality. It's an elitist sort of <laughs> mentality where like our little our little niche is better than everything else. Yeah. Um, so it's a very different media environment that I grew up in. And I don't know if the, like I don't know if there's I'd be curious like what you think. Like I don't know if there's the equivalent of that. It does seem like from a young age, you're, something that you're going to notice right away is like, oh, I put this thing up on Instagram and like, oh, it didn't, didn't get any likes or whatever. And that's going to like smart straight out the gate. So I didn't have that. Like I started out, some of the first things I started doing was publishing my own newspapers. This was way, way, way back yeah. uh, when I was young. And, you know, some I knew that some people read it, but <clears throat> I didn't have stats. I didn't know that, you know, uh, 50 people read it or whatever, zero people or whatever, you know, it seemed like it did. You, you didn't you did the metrics to see yeah. like how well or unwell you did. Um, so it's just like to have those numbers on everything that you do now seems like it'd be kind of hard to escape that the, the gravitational pull of yeah. of likes, right? But uh, I don't know. Maybe there is an indie mentality out there. But I would say for anybody young listening who is sort of like tied up in that, it is clearly like you do want to connect with an audience. 
you do want to, uh, it's sort of like having a business, like you want, you, you need money coming in the door, you need to turn a profit, but uh, it doesn't have to be the name of the game. You know, the name of the game can be, I'm going to provide a great service or run a great restaurant or, or whatever, you know, like, I think that needs to be pulling the train. And I feel that that's the way that I think of yeah. content creation, right? It's like, yeah. I want to do things that change people's minds. You know, I, I, want, I want them to, to, I want their brain to be a little bit different than it was uh, before they, before they encountered my stuff. That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think like you need to think about like a deeper connections rather than a lot of connections. To, to me, that's much more, that's much more important. Like, are you, are, are you somebody going to remember you? Is somebody going to remember what you did? And I think that's, um, a more uh, empowering way to look at the world. It's it, it, it's less because uh, because like just getting a lot of views is like most people are going to lose on that, right? Like that's just there aren't enough eyeballs to go around. Like most people are not going to be popular. But if you if in your little scene you can have an impact you know like uh just pick a culture where you can contribute and i'm sure you can contribute and you can matter and it might not result in thousands of likes or yeah. millions of views or whatever right but yeah. uh it will still i i think give you the same feeling of contributing i think like when we see the likes and the stuff i think that's the that's the button that's getting pushed yeah. in your brain, right? It's like, ooh, like I'm, yeah. I'm contributing. Like people, people like what I'm doing. Um, and I think there's better ways to get that than just looking at a number. Oh yeah, like um, yeah. I think I think you hit it in, um, in on the head with that. Like I think I think it's at its core what I see you in your art that you have created everything is a remix this is not a conspiracy theory and so many other videos that you have put out I think a lot has to do with you have defined what success is to you yeah and you know that that tomorrow yeah people will like it we will that is beyond my control but what is within my control is being a fan of my own work you know, yes. n not just creating the fast art that today there is virality ele element to it and tomorrow it just fades away. Like having that solid ground, having that solid foundation, then the numbers will come. It will impact you. It will make you happy. If it doesn't come, it's still you have a solid ground established as an artist. You know that what drives me, what is success to me. And I think well, here's, if I can yeah. just interject something, yeah, for sure, something for sure. that really connected with me, there's a guy named um, Kevin Kelly, who's a writer and, and oh, yeah. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's, he's, you know, he's a, he's a, a veteran of the technology scene. And yeah. he, something that I saw him say in a talk once that really connected with me was he wants to be loved, not liked. He wants to do things that people love rather than people like. And I think that's like a good North Star to sort of guide you. Because I think the people who get the lots of likes, they're the ones who will get the lots of views. Yeah. Uh, and they will be very popular, <laughs> but they won't be remembered in the same way, right? Like they're not connecting in the same yeah. way that someone who 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 we love yeah. uh, connected with you, right? And they're not yeah. going to appeal as broadly because they're not, it's not just kind of broadly like, oh, that's a funny video or whatever. Like it's more targeted to you. It's targeted to a particular type of person and it connects with you. Yeah. So I like to think of it that way. Like, and, and I think the way to make things that people love is for you to love it. That's the simplest way. Exactly. To do it, simplest exactly. Way to do it right? Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> because like, what people would love is still so beyond our control and it's so out there. Yes, we we have yeah. a sense of it for sure. But like you have to love your own work. It shouldn't yeah. be that, oh, I'm just and creating. At, least, at yeah. least you loved it. Like if you made it, and at, least loved you it loved at least you loved it. <laughs> Whereas if you were trying to make the other people like it and then they didn't like it and you don't really like it, well, you don't really have anything then, right? Yeah, yeah. I think what KO for me when... Uh, so Kevin Kelly is the one who wrote um, Thousand Thousand True Fans, right? Yes, exactly. Yep. Yeah, uh, and yeah. I, I, I got that book. I have still to read it. But I think yes. just the idea of... Having thousand true blog article that you can read. He has a thousand right. true fans 
just there's just a blog post. That you the can blog read. post, right? I I'll, I'll, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'll I'll actually uh, find that. But I think I, I got his book as well. But I think the whole idea of you know. I think a lot has to do with the way media has also shaped us in a way where we are like the success is about numbers like appealing to everyone. No, you don't have to appeal to everyone and making peace with that idea that not a lot of people will like my work or they won't love my work. It's tough. Yeah. It's it tough. Is. Absolutely. It's not it goes against our our natural programming, right? Yeah. Like I've definitely noticed I've heard this from other people the dislikes that you get and the negative comments and stuff, those are more memorable to <laughs> us and they draw our attention more than all the people who are liking it and saying great job and whatever, right? Like it's the dislikes that um, that stick in your mind, right? And it takes a while to get over that. I think that's our default is to, to we have a negativity bias, generally speaking, right? Yeah. Human beings do. Like when somebody doesn't like it, you notice that. Whereas yeah. all the people saying, oh, it was good. I really liked it. Like yeah, that's yeah. kind of forgettable, right? Yeah. Oh. Um, so it takes a while to wrap your head around that and get used to it. How, how do you cope up with that? Like, how do you cope up? I think it's just practice over the yeah. years. Like, it, it's still a struggle. Like, it's not something that I say that I, I think that I've just won on, right? Like, it's, but it's just something to, I just try to appreciate whenever anybody takes time to watch your stuff, I just try to appreciate that, right? Like, and there's times where things, I'll do things that d didn't do as well as I hoped they might do, but I try to, try to focus on like, oh, like a thousand people watch that or whatever. Like, that's amazing. Like that, like a thousand human beings in the world, like spent time watching this thing. That's incredible. So I just try to, I think you, you just try to appreciate the positive and you try to uh, stay aligned to your goal, which is to create positive change in people's lives and, um, educate and inspire and, and all those good things. And uh, when you, the, the little victories along the way are what you want to be paying attention to. And you just have to realize that like, there's always going to be people that dislike your stuff. And the more popular you get, by the way, the, the, the more heat that you get yeah. as well, right? Like the more hate that you get. More, more visibility popular. you get, right? Absolutely. So now more, more dislike. More trolls and yeah, and just people are resentful. They just, they wish it was them that was getting all these views or whatever, you know? So uh, it's a mixed bag when you get more popular as well. It's kind of nice to be somewhat popular, like popular among yeah, a, yeah. A, a certain group of people. Like that's actually a pretty good spot to be. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would say that it, it just, it's just something that you get used to over the years. Maybe, I don't know, maybe younger people can deal with that better. Cause they're used to, you guys are used to like the nasty mood of the internet more yeah. than us older people were. No, I think, I think it's still, it's, it's still a struggle. It's still a big, big struggle. Is it? I, okay. I honestly, as I relate to you on, because I started my content creation journey a bit late, um, around like when I was 26 or so, now in 27, 20, 25, 26. Until that time, I had spent enough time thinking about what do I like, you know? What do yeah. I want from my life? Yeah. And when other people would say, hey, it, it, this is not good, this is this sucks and this and that, it would still bother me. But yeah. how much attention did I pay it's quite different if those comments would have hit me at an early age mm -hmm. uh, where even I haven't defined what do I need from my life, what things drive me, what things doesn't. And I think yeah. that's the difference where a lot of youngsters, the Gen Z's that are coming up, they are still in that defining area, but they are yeah. still creating it. It's it's a good place to be because you're getting a lot of feedback about your content because mm -hmm. a lot of people are talking about it, they comment. But also, while you're defining it, if a lot of people just hate on you or say this yeah. or that, it can sort of mess up your, um, it can it can leave you in a jimbo or a place of quandary where you're like, I don't know who I am as an artist. And that's why I think um, it was important for me to um, ask you, what does, what is you, uh, what does being an artist means to, uh, means to you? Well, I have and, a simple, I have a simple insight there as yeah, well. Yeah. Something that I think like that I need to learn, I needed to learn as a young creator was that 
like the thing, this is a very simple thing, but like the thing that you create is not you. You are not one and the same with the thing you create, right? Like the thing you create and often like when you're starting out, your taste is better than your ability to execute, right? Like you, you, the things that you're into are at a higher level than the stuff that you can actually make, right? Because it takes a while to learn the craft and to improve and, and, and get better, right? Um, so just trying to separate you from the thing that you make, uh, is a very important early step. And when people aren't liking it, they aren't, it's the thing that you made that they're not necessarily connecting with. It's not you. Um, so I think like getting some distance between you and the thing that you make is, uh, is a very important early step that creators have to take. Yeah, I mean, it's not just about uh, separating the from your art just because, okay, how will people like it? It is also that sometimes, as you as I mentioned in your intro, you have to be a merciless critique. Yes. And to be Absolutely. a merciless critique as well, you have to sort of distance yourself from the yeah. art and actually look at it. Um, yeah, objectively and like yeah. call, call you yourself. You'll, yeah, if you don't do that, you'll... Sort of in the way that like people, uh, you, you can find this in relationships um, or with your family or whatever. Like when someone is taking criticism from you, they'll like wriggle around and like avoid, uh, they'll, they'll come up with all sorts of excuses and stuff and they'll just slip and slide around and, and try to avoid uh, confronting the thing that you're actually saying to them, right? Yeah. And we do that to our, we, we, you will do that to your own work if you think of it as an extension of yourself. You need to get it at arm's length from you so that you can be objective about it and so you can be willing to beat it up a bit because yeah. it benefits from you beating it up a bit. It doesn't yeah. benefit from you making excuses about it. Yeah, don't 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 marry marry your art. <laughs> it yeah. sort of helps to create that separation. Yeah, Something. That's... Um, something that came up, um, Kirby, when I was researching you is, as he said, like you have defined, you follow your bliss. Like I think the advice also that you give other uh, upcoming creators as well, that it is a cliche advice, but follow your bliss. See, work on things that you like to work on, not just driven by the audience. Everything is a remix and this is a conspiracy theory. They mm -hmm. are wildly different topics that you touched on uh -huh. yeah. so i i was quite intrigued i was like people here a lot of researchers uh, no, a lot of creators they give you advice that follow your niche like define one or two things and go deep and just talk about it yeah. and like they def define boundaries and right and you here have gone on to do massive projects. And these are massive projects. It took you 1.5 years and this is conspiracy theory. Not continuously, but it still took five to six yeah. years to actually come out. Yes. What factors do you consider while selecting a project to pursue? Like, what are some important key elements to that? I think for me, like... It, this is this is just part of how I work too. Like I need to be willing to live in something for a long time. <laughs> like for me, it, it ended up being years, but it doesn't have to be years. It could be months for you, but it has to be something that you're willing to, that has enough headroom, uh, and enough just room to explore, so that you can stay in it for a while, hmm. uh, and you're confident that you can make discoveries there and go on a journey in that space. Um, so, it, but it's mostly just a feel like it's not a real rational process. It's just like, I'm interested in this thing. I feel like there's a there, there, there's something to it. There's something that I can go in there and discover. Um, and it's just like trying to find these neighborhoods that you, you want to explore, um, yeah, I, I think of it that way. It's, it's a feeling. It's a feeling. Uh, the, thing, the things that I choose, it's not a rational, I'm, there's no metrics to it. Yeah. Uh, it's just a feeling. And like, I remember, it's not for everybody. Like, like it, it's a, it's more challenging for an audience as well to, to be like that because they can like one thing and they might have an interest in the one thing that you did and they don't have an interest in the other thing. Yeah. Um, but that's just what, what you got to do if you're built that way and you don't have to be built that way. Like some people are, like you said, like they have their niche and they want to stay in it. And that, I, I think lots of people are like that and that's great. It, it's easier. It's easier. 
it's a it's a better way to create content in terms of branding and uh, yeah. you know delivering something where people can expect a certain whatever from it. Like I remember when I was young, I would get there were certain musical artists mm-hmm. where I would they they would flip from one album to the next and do something very different. And I found it very frustrating, honestly. <laughs> and I turned into that. I've kind of turned into that sort of creator just because that's my temperament. You know, like I, I, after I've done something for a while, like when I did everything is remix, I did it like uh, the first version of it, like uh, over a decade ago. And by the time I finished it, like I was done, you know, like I, I wasn't looking to just keep doing that over and over again, because that's not, it was no longer interesting to me at that point. I had said what I wanted to say and it was time to move on and explore something new. And that's just the way that I personally am built. Not everybody yeah. is like that. Yeah. And for me, that was my bliss, right? Somebody else's bliss that's can be you go into that niche and you stay there and, and that makes you happy. Then great. You do that. But for me, I'm like project oriented. I'll do this sort of thing yeah. and I do that sort of thing. Uh, and then I will circle back also to these things. Like I did everything is remix 10 years ago yeah. and I did another series for a long time. And now I'm back to doing everything's remix and I'm, I'm rebooting the whole series and doing it again. And now I have like a really fresh perspective on it because I haven't just been just flogging the horse for the last 10 years or whatever. Right. Like I went yeah. off and, and let things germinate and let my mind explore other things uh, and refreshed myself and renewed my interest in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I love that because um, I think as, as you said, like it can always trace back to that you have defined what you want to do as an artist and you have defined yourself as an artist that this is what matters to me um, not the numbers um, because yeah as you said <laughs> it can be frustrating sometimes the audience will go back hey why are you talking about this who sure. gave you the permission who gave you the authority and sometimes sure. creators are like oh yeah no one gave me the authority no one gave yeah. me the permission mm-hmm. and sure. you're sitting over here and saying I gave myself the permission. Yeah, because absolutely. This- yeah. And I think that that goes with the, like the being willing to swim against the current, right. Being willing to bite the hand that feeds you a little bit. Right. Like I, for, for me, that's just part of my temperament. Um, not everybody is like that. Um, but I do think that's part of the artistic temperament is that like, I'm interested in this. I know it's not like the thing, the thing that the audience wants me to do, but I'm interested in it and I hope I can bring them with me. I hope I can, can, can uh, lure these people into this new direction that I'm going in. But, you know, at the same time, you know, you're not going to get most of them probably. <laughs> That's just the way it goes. People yeah. don't like a lot of people, just the, the chances are, if you do something very different from what you did before, just the chances are most people are not who liked your old thing are not going to like the new thing. And that's just the way it goes. Just like if you made a, a, a whatever kind of video, you've made an action game and then you make an RPG the next time or whatever, like you're a lot of, you're going to lose a bunch of people along the way. Yeah. That's just the way it goes. That's just the way it goes. It's uh, it's life. You cannot really take yes. everyone with you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what you have to do is you have to do it. Uh, yeah. But I do, I do, uh, the people who have that sing, that niche, more niche interest, hmm. if, if anybody listening, if you happen to have that, be thankful for that. I think it's, yeah. it's an easier road uh, in a lot of ways. It's easier to, to build an audience and, yeah. and to be a brand that way. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, if you're not built that way, if, you're try, if you try to force yourself into that mold, I, I think yeah. it, it won't work. Yeah, I, I I like what you said over there. Is it's it's not like putting putting the people who have niche down. You're like, that's great as well. Yeah, this absolutely. is this is where I, I am. I at. wish I wish I could do it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And uh, and and the message for the young creators out there that even if you haven't figured out your niche and. Because a lot of people, a lot of artists, like now I hear the term niche thrown out a lot as mm-hmm. compared to previously artists were sort of had they had an image of being temperamental and just doing things and going out there and exploring and now it has become a lot about business and that is great because we need food we need money but like you define how much money is enough to like the the art form that you want to create you do not always want to tune it according to the money that it will make because that is one aspect sure if it works for you go ahead do that Mm -hmm. but a lot of times maybe you might have to sacrifice your artistic choices your artistic views you know to just satisfy 
getting the money or the views and things yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's a balance that everybody has to strike, right? Like yeah. if you just completely do your own thing and you're unconcerned about the audience again, yeah. like if that's your temperament and that's what you want to do and you can finance your life in some other way, then do it. Like absolutely yeah. do it. If, but for most of us, you need to, um, I, I think not even just, just like the money. You also, you, you want to connect with people, you know, you want to influence minds. And I think that requires uh, you know, sometimes incorporating things that maybe you wouldn't incorporate, um, you know, get, get incorporating uh, types of material that you might not normally be that interested in. Like, yeah. for instance, in the new video series, there's a new video coming out shortly. Mm -hmm. And it has stuff about like superhero films in it, about yeah. Marvel and all that stuff. I'm not especially interested in that stuff. But yeah. I'm aware of it. I know that that stuff's going on and I've seen plenty of it. People are interested in it and it just seems like a good vehicle to present the sorts of ideas that I want to get out there. So I'm taking stuff that is popular that I can, I can find a way to connect with it. It's not really my thing, but I can find a way to connect with it and I can marry it to the, to the ideas that I actually want to communicate. So to me, that's an example of like bringing together, like the world likes this and I like this and I, I think I can overlap them like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I I love it because like, as you said, and what uh, comes up is you're ready to morph, you're ready to transform based on, but you won't sacrifice some core elements that you have. Yeah. Talking about bringing in the world elements, I think it's it's so important because you have spoken a lot about this. You have made a whole series about it, but I want to take you there for the for for this audience maybe who hasn't seen your work. Mm -hmm. What is the core idea about everything is a remix? Everything is a remix, basically. It's interesting that it's cool that you're, like, you're going for a younger audience. It's something that I made for my younger self, I think, when I was in my 30s. And I don't mean my, like my 20-something self. I made it for like my teenage self, like my oh. 14, 15, 16-year-old self. I think that yeah. was sort of the guiding. That that was what was pulling me towards it. Because when I was that age, I was writing and I was creating uh, publications and stuff. And I felt very, like creativity was very mysterious to me. Like I hmm. was creative, but the things that other creators could do, especially older ones could do, was very magical to me, right? It was very yeah. mysterious and magical. And I felt derivative and unoriginal, you know? That was just uh, how I felt. And it was like this thing that I had to work through. And I felt like it kind of held me back, that feeling of not being original, of being derivative. It kind of slowed me down. It, it made me wary of, it made me less likely to, to copy and build on other people's stuff because I was trying to trying to do something that people hadn't done before. And it just, it sends you down a bunch of dead ends. Yeah. So it was something that, it was a series that I made for my younger self to, to show younger people okay. that creativity is premised on copying. You have mm. to copy to be creative. It is like the core thing. It is the central thing. If you don't do that, then you're trying to reinvent the wheel, right? You're trying to invent a new, better wheel. And good luck inventing a new, better <laughs> wheel because we've got the wheel. Like, you're not going to beat it. Um, so it was a story for my younger self uh, that I think was aimed at other people who had similar sorts of troubles with kind of finding their voices. Uh, and it was meant to show people that copying is good, especially back then, like over 10 years ago. Um, it was not cool to be a derivative. It was not cool to copy. It was very shameful. Um, and I certainly do think even now that you can go too far with it. And it's not just a completely good thing, but it is essential to creativity. Um, and then the formula, the little formula that I developed in the series was copy, transform, and combine. So in my view, it starts with copying. Then you can transform. A lot of the transformation that young creators end up doing is accidental. You try to copy something and then it changed along the way. Yeah. You don't know what you're doing. So you transformed it and you made something new and maybe the new thing is kind of cool. Like, right. Like that's what yeah. happened with lots of music, with lots of punk rock and stuff like that. People were trying to do something else and then they ended up doing this yeah. other thing because they couldn't play right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so transformation is, I, I think of it as being kind of the second, secondary stage hmm. after copying. 
And then there is combine, which to me is kind of the most powerful aspect, which is taking together, bringing together different ideas, uh, yeah. merging them together. And uh, that to me is kind of the most, that's how you can get, kind of get the most explosive yeah, results. Yeah, yeah. Transforming things tend to be, tends to be kind of a slow iterative thing. Whereas if yeah. you combine things combine together, things. you know, you can get really dramatic results. Yeah, yeah. Now you hit something very good over there. It is like, you, you're like, copy that's how in one of your videos you said it is how we learn but through copying is how we learn now you're not saying to go out there and steal so what's the difference between copying and stealing if you can i think i think number one if you're not selling it in my in my Hmm. view personally if you're not selling it uh, then I think you're mostly on solid ground and you can kind of do whatever you want. Like if it's if it's on just on your Instagram feed and you're using whoever's music and you're doing whatever with it, to me, that's fair game. You, you can do whatever you want. Now, I think to be nice, to be to be kind to society, you should credit people. I think that's also important. So the things that you use, you know, give shout outs to these to these uh, other artists that you're incorporating. Um, but I basically, but I think people are not always going to do that great when they're starting out. And I think that's okay. Like, it's okay if, if you're stealing a bit when you're young, like if you're not crediting everything perfectly, I, I think that's okay. I, I think young people stealing a bit is okay. I think it's yeah. okay to steal a bit when you are young. Yeah. Um, but I think as you get older, you definitely need to be careful about attribution and crediting people. Uh, so I think that's sort of uh, the key thing is attribution, especially yeah. once you get once you've sort of found your voice and you're, you're doing a thing. I think you need to the things that you're copying, you definitely need to attribute them. And then when you're making money, the rules change again and you have to be even more careful at that point. Yeah. Uh, and if you are copying, you have to like really clearly acknowledge things or you have to yeah. license things and pay money and pay people yeah. for the things that you're using and all that. Once you're making money, you're kind of into a different sort of league at that point. Yeah. yeah. But for young people, I would encourage them. Definitely. I would encourage young people to learn to credit, yeah. learn to attribute yeah. other people's work. I think it's just the kind thing to do. Yeah. Um, but don't like you're going to be copying a bunch you're going to like probably unintentionally steal things sometimes and i i think i just wouldn't uh i wouldn't beat myself up about it yeah especially yeah. when not many people are watching it or listening to it because <laughs> <laughs> what harm are you doing at that point right yeah because i think throughout your series you gave great examples that sometimes so we put so much pressure especially when we are starting right it's like a beginner's dilemma that you also faced that when you are starting you put so much pressure that i don't want to feel that my art is derivative it's someone else's work that i'm putting out there today a lot of people talk about imposter syndrome that mm-hmm. i don't think i know anything i just take people's stuff from here and there and yeah. i just like i'm putting it out there and i feel like an imposter yes but I think what you hit it over there is we put so much pressure to be original. But I think at the core of it, today we are using this language. We had to learn ABC. There are so many ways that we are living our lives, deriving from so many people's work, that it's okay. It's okay to copy and transform and combine ideas and present it with your zing. You know, yes. your, your everything is a remix had so many elements that I'm sure you would have like not everything, as you said, like if you sit down to define everything, like reinvent wheel of everything, then you'll just be busy reinventing the wheel and yeah. the wheel won't go forward. Yes. You know? You'll make a yeah. worse wheel is what you'll do. Yeah. And I think just like the way that you bring things together is creative, right? Like the way that you combine and transform the mere even even if all the elements are are like everybody knows them the way that you bring them together that can have its own sort of uh character to it you know like yeah. in a lot of my video work i there's 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 a fair amount of it where like there's nothing that i've created in it aside from my voice there's my speaking voice and the story that i'm telling <laughs> that that's <laughs> always mine but like the video is not mine the audio is not mine yeah. Um, but the way that I inc- the way that I stylize them together is very me. Like people yeah. can look at it and go, "Oh, I, I know who that is. That's that guy. That's that everything is a remix guy." 
Um, <laughs> and it's just because I bring them together in a certain way and mix them a certain way and edit them a certain way. Yeah. And it has a style, it has an aesthetic that you develop uh, with practice. Yeah, and and and, and I, I think this idea that you put out, like everything is a remix, it also helps you to not start from a blank canvas. Yes. I think that is sure. in itself a big, big challenge for so many creators that mm -hmm. that hor horrendous wide wide board completely empty oh, and yeah. then you have to create things from from a blank canvas and when you're copying combining and transforming and doing all of these things you sort of have something on the canvas that you can bring in your creativity because we all have different stories and things that um that we can brought, bring out by using some other uh, derivatives from here and there. Uh, w yeah. What came up for me when I was watching your um, series is a lot, a lot of times in schools as well, right? We are told not to copy. We are yeah. told that be original, write something on your own. And that is what happened with me as well. When I was in my uh, master's, I was doing it at USC. And mm -hmm. um, I, I had an open source software to use at mm -hmm. my disposal. Mm -hmm. And when I used it in my code, I told my professor about it that, hey, it doesn't feel like I have done any work. Because mm -hmm. a lot of APIs, a lot of functions has been written by someone else. And I'm just like combining it up and down and making my yeah. work easy. And mm -hmm. I think that's why what you say is so important. He, and he told me the same thing. You have to stand on the shoulder of giants. There was yeah. a guy who I think you mentioned in your video who wrote, re, retyped mm -hmm. Great Gatsby to yeah. get a feel of how a good uh, novel is written. Right. Yeah. And you can that do was, that. That was Hunter S. Thompson, I, I think. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and and you can do that. Um, re retype things, stand on the shoulder of giants, and and work work through it. Yeah, and I mean, it's something that I'd point out too is like, especially when you're starting out, yeah. your contribution to it might be very small, right? Yeah. Like the little tweak, it might just be some little tweak that you put on it, right? It might be just that you brought these two kind of obvious things together, but hey, you brought them together. You did it, right? Yeah. So sometimes it like the thing you make, it might still very much be somebody else's thing. <laughs> like it's still it's not much different. Yeah. Uh, but that's a start. That's a start. That's a, that's a start. And I think that's yeah. what you pointed out. Like originality is nothing that it comes out from nowhere. It is it is sort of the unprecedented combinations. Mm -hmm. Which I think you you pointed out by sharing Henry Ford's um, um, quote as mm -hmm. well that I yeah. invented nothing new. I just assembled the discoveries of other men behind whom we were centuries of work. Yeah. I think that's what it is. One yes. thing before I go to my um, as we are to going towards wrapping up this interview yeah. is you you shared something during your Google uh, talk. I think mm -hmm. that's where you ended it yeah. by. You shared Charles Willie's quote, and I'm reading it word by word, by idolizing those whom we honor. We do a disservice both to them and to ourselves. We fail to recognize that we could go and do likewise. Yes. Can you, can you talk a bit about that quote? Well, that's something, gosh, I forget who wrote that. It's a sociologist. Ch Ch from, Charles uh, Willie? Charles Willie, right. Yeah. Um, it is a... We tend to romanticize creators, right? Yeah. And I've done this. Like I, I <laughs> did, you, everything is remix actually does it, and I think we should romanticize it because it's really hard to do. It's really challenging, and I think the people who achieve in that realm should be rewarded. You know, like we should get they. Sh it should be prestigious. We should hold these people in high esteem, right? So I, I do think it 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 is, it should be romanticized a bit. But at the same time, when you put these people on a pedestal, you you think that there's some that there's they've got some magical quality that you don't possess, and they don't. They are just people, and they got there one step at a time. And any of them, where whatever heights they scale to, uh, to them, it just it, it's not that amazing to them. They just got there one step at a time, and it doesn't feel that amazing to them. Like something that resonated with me, I forget who said it, but he was talking about business and he talked about how um, when he was young, he thought of 
of building a business as like climbing a mountain to get to the box that's at the top. And then when he got to the box and opened the box, there's nothing mm. in the box. Right? Uh, and that's, yeah. <laughs> that's what scaling the, the heights of achievement are. Like you think that yeah. there's something up there that's, I don't know, like, I don't know what the hell people I would think feel is, different. There is yeah, something. The, yeah. There's something, yeah. And there's just not, you're still just you. Yeah. Um, and you just got there uh, by doing a bunch of, by m- taking a bunch of steps that none of them seem that uh, one by one, they just don't seem that amazing. Yeah. So and we all can do that to some degree. I'm not saying we all can be uh, super achievers, um, but we all, there's nothing separating a, a, a great innovator, a great artist from you. They're just a person who got there, uh, one step at a time. Often yeah. there's lots of, there's a lot of luck involved in, in how they got there. Um, but I think by holding people in that high yeah. of esteem and thinking that they have some sort of other quality to them, yeah. it discourages you from taking your own little steps and scaling your own little heights. And you never know, like once you like start making these steps and start moving forward, then you realize, oh, I can go a lot higher than this, right? Like I, I can, and then you do end up achieving uh, a lot just because you uh, had the initial gusto to, to start, you know, like just starting can be challenging. And I think yeah. when you are intimidated by creative achievement, uh, and in awe of it, that actually can hold you back from just starting on the journey. Yeah, yeah, so true, so true. It's just start on the journey and, and take inspirations, take inspirations yeah. from other people, but you can do it too if you just like go step by step. I think it was Jim Carrey, I think, who, who shared something similar, what you sh- shared, like, I want people to go out there and make a million dollar to realize that that is not the answer that you're seeking. No, you know? yeah. So you, yeah. so you have it within you, a lot of creative elements, go out there, learn from other creatives, use their work, coffee, transform, combine. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the message. Kirby, before I last, ask my last question, mm-hmm. where can people find you? Um, how can they connect to you? What is the best place to reach out? I would say the best place is probably YouTube. If you just mm-hmm. search for Kirby Ferguson or for Everything is a Remix, I'm sure you will find me on YouTube. Uh, you can find me on the web. If you just Google everything, everything is a remix. You can find mm-hmm. me. I'm at everything is remix.info. That's the URL. It's kind of a funny URL, but just <laughs> Google me and you'll get me. Uh, and I'm on Twitter at remix everything. I would say those are the major destinations. Got it. And yeah, like that's where if someone wants to reach out and have a conversation, um, that's where they can reach out or oh, you're yeah, more active. Twitter, Twitter is the best place. Wonderful. Wonderful. Maybe my last question to you is, yeah. if I give you a megaphone to shout out a message, a mm-hmm. lesson, and it can be not just one, it can be like amongst your top three or four, it's not one solid message. But if I give you a megaphone and you have to shout out that message or that lesson that you know now and you wish you had known that before, what would mm. it be? That's a great question. Um... I mean, I don't know how I would phrase it, but it basically is the everything is remix story, right? Like it's just start, um, you're going to suck when you start. And when I say just start, I mean, it can be anything. It doesn't have to be making movies or or videos or, or uh, writing or, or music or whatever. It can be code, it can be programs, it can be a business, it can be, it can be a business that people don't think of as being creative, right? Like your restaurant or, or bakery or your barbershop or whatever, right? Like it can be, it can be anything. It, be, it can be your family, it can be how you're raising uh, your children. Um, just start. You're going to make mistakes and copy freely, copy uh, a lot. Don't sweat too much about how you're copying things um, and transform those ideas, combine those ideas with other ideas and iterate, you know, keep trying different things until you get something that feels right to you that maybe connects with uh your customers or your audience or, or whatever. Um, 
but unfortunately I don't have like a super succinct way of saying it, but basically I, I already did it with everything. No, you, nice. you all... it, that is the message. That's one of the, it's the most important insight that, that I have yeah. uh, stumbled upon in my yeah, I mean, life. You, you, and it's not mine. It's not, yeah. my, not my idea. I, I have framed it a particular I think, way. I think like. what, I think the things that needs to be said under the sun has already been said under the sun. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah. like I heard somewhere that it is not heard, you know, like there are yeah. still a lot of people who haven't heard that. And absolutely. it's worth, worth shouting out, worth repeating, totally. reiterating it. And, yes. and that's where like I think you bringing back everything is a remix with a new zing, with a new fresh perspective in this mm-hmm. 10, 10 years or so that you worked on it. Mm-hmm. That's a testament to that. Yeah, people still, the thing that I I know is that people are still endlessly interested in it. Like part of the reason, again, this is like sort of marrying your interest with with the interest of the audience. It's, it's, people just keep watching it, right? Like the (laughs) other things that I do, it's tough to compete with. Like when I do something that's not it, it's tough to compete with with everything is remix like it it tends to when i make something new the new thing will go to the top of my stats for a bit and then it will drop and everything's yeah, everything cool. we'll take over again <laughs> so it's something that just people are are endlessly interested in um so i also sort of felt uh, it was my duty to renew it and refresh it and give people give younger uh, audiences and a contemporary audience of a, 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 a renewed version of it that is current that uh, talks about culture as it is right now. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's the the second part of that is coming out. I don't know, maybe a week or so. I'm excited. I yeah. I, I will be keeping my eyes on out what for that, it? guys. One of the best things about Kirby is which I personally, personally enjoyed is he is out there. He he just, he's so relatable in terms of that he has created some amazing art. Everything is a remix. This is not a conspiracy theory. But he's just simply sharing these messages that don't take a lot of pressure. You don't have to be original. Take the pressure off. Go out there. Don't start with a blank canvas. As you are a young creator, experimentation is what you need. Creating more stuff is what you need. Define. What what does it mean to be an artist to you? What does it mean to be a successful artist to you? Because when you start from there, or you would find it as you progress, but keep an eye out for that because that would define a lot of what you create. Don't marry your art. Separate from your (laughs) art. Give yourself a little little bit of headroom when going out there, selecting things that you want to do. And there is nothing that selecting a niche is smaller as compared to just doing whatever comes to you. Whatever you want, go out there, define it, and that's where you want to be. Screenshot. A lot of... the things that we discussed over your screenshot, tag Kirby, tag me, what what things resonated with you? Kirby, thank you so much for, pleasure, for saying man. yes. It's it's been it's been an honor, honestly. Oh, that's awesome. I'm happy I, to hear. Thank you so much for my pleasure. Everyone listening out there, this is Amit Pandey. You were listening to Wish I Knew That Before. See you next time. Yeah.